Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again in our YouTube series about creating your own success. And if you joined us last week, we had our first series, which we're so excited to be creating number two. And if you haven't joined us, thank you so much for joining us today. Please be sure to subscribe and give our video a thumbs up. We would greatly, greatly appreciate that. And of course, today I have with us again, our wonderful guru of success, Anne-Marie Sabbath. And we are going to go over and give you some amazing goodies from her book. This week, we had our giveaway. Anybody that leaves a comment will be entered into our random generator and you will receive a copy of Anne-Marie's wonderful book, what self-made millionaires do that most people don't. And of course, I'll have all the details for you in the description of this video. So Anne-Marie, thank you so much for bringing us your wisdom today again. Caroline, thanks for having me and hello to all of the subscribers and listeners. I would be very interested in having anyone who was with us last week, let us know by emailing you or me at Anne Marie at AnneMarieSabbath.com, what you have put into practice in the way of visualizing before we begin what we're going to talk about. Yes, last week's, week's tips were amazing. Um, every time I, I reread, I always pick up some more goodies. So definitely, if you haven't already, check out Anne Marie's book. It's really incredible. Today, we're talking about habit number three. And the sections in it, of course, we're going to go over. And the topic is creating your own success and setting meaningful goals. So we want to know what goals have you set for your success. And if you haven't set them yet, after you hear today's video cast, you definitely will want to. So Anne-Marie, in your book, you talk about this Harvard Business School study. And I found that so intriguing and informative. Can you just go over with our listeners what those key points were so they can have some good insight? You bet. In Mark McCormick's book, What They Don't Teach You in Harvard Business School, there is an incredible study. The study is this. In this book, there were 100 MBA students from Harvard who were asked, do you have goals? 84 of the 100, amazingly, had no goals. 13 of the 100 had goals only in their minds. Three of the 100 had documented goals. 10 years later, Carol Ann, the same individuals were found. 10 years later, the same 100 individuals were surveyed, probably on LinkedIn, and they were asked, where they are in their success process. The 13 individuals who had goals only in their minds one decade before were earning on average twice as much as the 84 individuals who had not documented goals 10 years ago. However, the three individuals who had documented goals a decade earlier were making 10 times more than the 97 people put together. So what does that tell you about the importance of documenting goals? This is from the book, Mark McCormick's book. Oh, what right. they don't teach you at Harvard Business School. And this was a study that was conducted on students in a 1979 Harvard MBA program. Ah, gotcha, okay. So those numbers are really impressive and speak for themselves. So folks that document their goals clearly down the ro road earn more money and are more successful, right? Well, the key is yes, you wouldn't go on vacation or start a trip unless you knew where you were going. It's mm -hmm. the same thing in life. Ask yourself, what do I want? Where am I now? And how am I going to get there? It's creating the path for success. Great. So everybody out there, if you haven't started yet, make sure that you start documenting your goals, um, whether it's journaling or you write them in a Word document. It's so important for you to do that in order 
to go up the ladder to find your success. And now, Anne-Marie, you talk in your book about taking control of your life. And I think that's a real big one because I think a lot of folks feel like they don't have control of their lives, whether it's they have a job they're unhappy with or maybe they have a family situation that's out of control. Can you give us some tips about what folks can do right now, right today, to start taking control of their lives? Definitely. First of all, we're all human. And so accept yourself as you are, as you take control of your life. Ask yourself, in fact, write them down. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? If you don't admit weaknesses, then guess what? You're not being honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. The next thing is to have a positive sense of self. Read books that make you feel like you can do whatever you want. It's a terrific way to build your sense of self-esteem and self-confidence. Remember, you are the sum total of the four people with whom you spend the most time. And in order to be in control of your life, you want to make sure that you are your environment. Now, when you happen to be in a crossroad, and if you're not, then you're not walking far enough, then you will be able to manage that situation rather than succumbing to it, rather than letting it manage you. The third way to take control of your life is to stop overthinking situations. Avoid paralysis analysis. The worst decision is no decision. Let me give you an example. I am coaching a particular individual in order to create her own success. She has invested, when I tell you, I'm not kidding you, umpteen dollars in coaches. However, she hasn't generated any revenue. And I said to her, stop overthinking it. Stop gathering information from everybody else. You know your roadmap. You know where you want to go. Start doing it. There is a time you have to jump in the water and then put your swimming lessons into practice. That's such an excellent point because I think a lot of people spend so much time planning, 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 and they feel safe doing that. And they're afraid to jump in and, and actually start to do the work, right? Exactly. And here is what it takes to create your own success. You find out what you want. We talked about this. Taking control, you write it down. And one thing we must include, Carol Ann, is do not tell anyone. Yes. Talk it, and it's going to be cheap. Your words are going to be diluted. Walk it. Write down what you want. Tuck it into your mattress. Put it in your wallet. We said this last week. I have to repeat it. Put it in the notes of your smartphone. Tell no one. When you talk it, your energy is dissipated. When you walk it, you are making it happen. You are acting as if. So this is a form of taking control. Know who you are. Know the best of you. Work on your weaknesses. Build your self-confidence. And start to put it into practice. That is taking control of your life. And you also talk about three other points that are very dear to my heart. Three ways to keep your word. You know, everybody wants to be a person of integrity and everyone wants to know people and socialize with people that keep their word. But unfortunately, a lot of us don't. Could you talk a little bit about some of the research that you did in your book that really points to this, you know, how important these things are in creating your own success? Definitely. The only thing we have in life is our word. Now, one of the things that people forget in order to create their own success, I don't care if it's personal success, professional success, is if they tell themselves they're going to do something, they have to keep their word. Mm -hmm. Keeping your word to yourself is more important than keeping your word to someone else. So if you say to yourself, I will read one book a month, I will only spend money if I have planned for the purchase, that is keeping your word. In order to be able to be a person who does what you say you're going to do, 
It's essential to keep your word. And in the book, What Self Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, we talk about the importance of work ethic, the importance of keeping your word. So the three tips are, when you say you're going to do something, be true to yourself, write it down, it becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. I told you I would do something, Carol Ann, before we started this video cast, I wrote it down, mm -hmm. it's in front of me. It's not a matter of forgetting, it's a matter of saying, I've told you, now the second is writing it down, so it becomes a reality. When you say you're going to do something, do not do it by the time you said you would. Always do it before. Under promise and over deliver. And the way to do that is tell someone after you are going to do it and then do it before. So if I tell you that I will call you by noon, I will make sure I call you by three minutes to 12. Keeping your word is all you have in order for people to build trust in you. The last one, which is a real big one. Losers make excuses, winners find solutions. First of all, if you forgot something, be honest, tell, I forgot to do something. And you know what, that excuse works once. However, I didn't finish it. Well, unless there is an illness in the family, come on. And keeping your word means your reputation precedes you. So if you have kept your word 10 times, and the 11th time something has come up, tell the truth. However, keeping your word is the way people trust you, is essential for creating your own success. Gosh, that's so very true. I hope the folks out there realize that, that these three ways are essential to building your roadmap to success. And all of these steps will definitely get you there. Um, you also talk about being a person of integrity, and I see how that ties in together with, of course, keeping your word. And in your book, you go into a wonderful story about Connie. Could you share um, the four ways that you describe in your book about integrity and share a little bit with us about Connie? Well, Connie Lorenz is truly amazing. Connie Lorenz is now the president of an asphalt company. However, she was not born into that. Connie's mom had multiple sclerosis and was wheelchair bound. Connie's mom couldn't work and they were extremely poor. Connie ate out of dumpsters, no yeah. joke. Connie lived out of her car when she started working. Connie always had a work ethic. That's what was so amazing. Well, one of the things that Connie did was she landed several jobs. One of them, the last one, was the operations manager at an asphalt company. And Connie saw all of this money going into the company. However, when it was time to pay bills, she saw that there was not enough money to cover them. So she finally figured out, I'm not sure if it was a year or two years, after she started working there and she was responsible for making these payments for her company, she realized that there was something fishy going on. Mm. What happened was the president at that time of the asphalt company had embezzled $1.5 million. Well, what's worse than that is the president happened to be the best friend of the out of state owner. Connie said the worst day in her life was to have to tell the out-of-state owner that his best friend had stolen money from the company. So the owner said to her on the QT, please do two sets of books. I need grounds to fire him. She did that for eight months. At that point, the president was fired. The owner said to her, Please do whatever you can to get my business back in the black. If you do, I will turn the business over to you. Now, Connie didn't want the business. All Connie wanted to do was to pay her bills when they came in. That was her goal in life, not to wait until the last minute. Two years later, she and the president were sitting in the office. The president was signing documents the last document was turning the business over to her. 
Wow. This was due to her integrity. And Connie Lorenz, to this day, is the president of this asphalt company based outside Orlando. Now, if integrity doesn't work, tell me what does. That's a beautiful story. What are some of the key points of integrity that you feel our listeners need to know? Well, it's pretty essential. Once again, we talked about it. Keep your word. Do what you say you're going to do. Be honest. When you have made a mistake, tell. The second is when you have made a mistake, fess up. Mm. You're human. Do not point fingers. Do not act as if you didn't do it because people would rather have honesty. Be ethical. Look what happened to Connie Lorenz. Doesn't mean you're gonna have a company turned over to you. However, for goodness sake, look what happened. There are always peripheral benefits. Yes. And the other thing, the fourth point is be respectful. You have to respect yourself in order to respect other people. I don't care if it's the person who is cleaning the restroom stalls when you go to a public restroom. Acknowledge a person. Have a good day. A, B, C, D, whatever, pause. Whatever it is, respect other people. And I will tell you, the real person comes out when no one is looking and you are respectful. That's so very true, so very true. Um, you know, and it's easy to see, like you could go out for dinner and see someone disrespecting the waitress, just being rude. And it, it really makes you sit back and question that person's integrity right off the bat. Like it's an immediate sign that something's not right. So it's so important to make sure that we keep our word and that we have integrity and that we treat other people with the respect that we deserve. Um, and all of these things are so important to finding, you know, your, your keys to success. That's right. And one of the things I would like your listeners to hear, your viewers to hear is this. We learn two things from everyone. We learn what to do. We learn what not to do. Yes. Once again, none of us are perfect. So when you see someone doing something wrong, ask yourself, what can I do better than I'm already doing? And let me make sure that I am not portrayed as the way that person is. Excellent. Now, next week, we're so excited because we're going to delve into your book some more. This is where it starts to get really juicy. Um, we're going to learn how to set priorities, master our time, and we're going to get some key points on staying focused. And don't forget, if you haven't checked out Anne Marie's book yet, we will have the links in the description for you. Um, so please be sure to check it out. It's really amazing. You'll find yourself reading it over and over again. So Anne-Marie, anything else you'd like to say in closing to our listeners, just summing up what they've heard today? Well, I really want people to invest in this book. And the key is right now it's on Amazon Kindle for 99 cents. Are you <gasps> kidding? 99 cents. That's crazy. And so this is important. What I want your viewers to know is this. I would love them to invest in a copy of the book. The 99 cents is not going to change my life. However, right. them seeing these 52 secrets will assist them in recognizing that they are halfway, three quarters of the way there to creating their own success. Whether their goal is to be a self-made millionaire or to have financial freedom based on where they are, where they want to be, my goal is to assist them in making it happen. That's just honestly one of the reasons I love you, Anne Marie. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And again, I'm honored to work with you. And I look forward to hearing from the viewers of this podcast anytime you have questions or comments or tell me where you are in your self made millionaire or call it success journey. You're welcome to email me at Anne Marie at Anne Marie Sabbath, S A B A T H dot com, or uh, look for us on our websites. We really want to assist you in making it happen. Yes, and I'll, of course, have all the links and information in the description of this video so you can contact either myself or Anne Marie with any questions. 
So we look forward to seeing you again next week. We will always upload on a Monday before noon. So please keep an eye out for our videos and please be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thanks again so much and we'll see you soon. Bye now. Bye.